After Donald Trump secured a second term as President of the United States, debates surrounding shifts in U.S. trade policies gained momentum. Among the most contentious ideas is his proposal to impose broad tariffs on imports, with a particular emphasis on Chinese goods. These measures are expected to intensify existing tensions in U.S.-China trade relations. While specific details remain uncertain, the steady decline in trade between the two countries over recent years has already posed significant challenges for American companies dependent on the Chinese market. China, aiming to reduce its reliance on American goods, has actively diversified its supplier base. This strategic pivot has impacted several major U.S. industries. Over the past three years, bilateral trade volumes have dropped considerably. Most recently, China ceased its purchases of copper scrap from U.S. suppliers. This video explores four key industries most affected by the decline in China's imports from the United States. Before delving into these sectors, it is essential to understand the historical evolution of U.S.-China relations. The relationship between the United States and China stretches back more than two centuries, marked by alternating phases of cooperation, competition, and conflict. Key developments in their geopolitical and economic interactions provide valuable insight into the complexities of this relationship. Direct trade between the United States and China began on February 22, 1784, with the departure of the merchant ship Empress of China from New York Harbor. Known as the Chinese Queen, this vessel was originally constructed in 1783 as a privateer but was later converted for commercial use after the American Revolutionary War. The ship carried 30 tons of ginseng, highly prized in China for its medicinal value, under the leadership of Captain John Green and business agent Samuel Shaw and Thomas Randall. Arriving in Canton, now Guangzhou, in August 1784, the Empress of China exchanged its cargo for Chinese goods such as tea, silk, and porcelain. The ship's successful return to New York on May 11, 1785, spurred other American merchants to engage in trade with China, ushering in the era of the old China trade. Throughout the 19th century, U.S. commercial interests expanded in China, but this period also witnessed tensions, including the Opium Wars from 1839 to 1860. Although the United States did not directly participate in these conflicts, it benefited from their outcomes. In 1844, the Treaty of Wang Hia, the first formal agreement between the U.S. and China, secured most favored nation status for the U.S., providing equal trade privileges alongside other Western powers. This treaty opened five Chinese ports to American trade and allowed U.S. citizens to be tried under American law rather than Chinese jurisdiction. Additionally, it permitted Americans to purchase land and establish institutions such as churches and hospitals, fostering cultural and commercial exchanges. During World War II, the United States supported China's resistance against Japan through military aid, financial assistance, and personnel deployment including the famous Flying Tigers. This volunteer air group, led by Claire L. Cheneau, became renowned for its combat success against Japanese forces symbolized by its shark-faced Curtis P-40 Warhawk aircraft. Following Japan's defeat in 1945, the Chinese Civil War resumed between the nationalist Kuomintang, KMT, and the Communist Party of China, CPC. Despite U.S. military and financial support for the KMT, the CPC ultimately prevailed. On October 1, 1949, Mao Zedong declared the establishment of the People's Republic of China, PRC, while the KMT retreated to Taiwan, maintaining its claim as the Republic of China, ROC. Amid the Cold War's broader anti-communist strategy, the U.S. initially recognized the ROC in Taiwan as the legitimate government of China. This policy persisted until the 1970s, when geopolitical shifts prompted a reassessment of U.S.-China relations. Cold War Period, from 1949 to 1971 In the early Cold War years, the United States sought to isolate the People's Republic of China through trade embargoes and restrictions on strategic exports. These measures were reinforced by direct military confrontations, such as during the Korean War from 1950 to 1953, where the United States and China supported opposing sides. By the early 1970s, however, changing geopolitical dynamics led to a gradual thaw in relations, culminating in President Richard Nixon's historic 1972 visit to China. Rapprochement and Normalization, from 1971 to 1979 
President Richard Nixon's 1972 visit to the People's Republic of China marked a pivotal shift in U.S.-China relations, culminating in the issuance of the Shanghai Communique on February 27, 1972. This landmark document established a framework for future cooperation between the two nations, while candidly acknowledging their differing perspectives, particularly regarding Taiwan. The Shanghai Communique was groundbreaking in that it allowed both countries to express their respective stances on key issues without necessitating immediate resolution. The United States recognized the One China policy, stating that all Chinese on either side of the Taiwan Strait maintain there is but one China, and affirmed its interest in a peaceful settlement of the Taiwan question. This approach enabled the United States and China to set aside their differences temporarily, paving the way for increased trade and diplomatic engagement. In 1979, under President Jimmy Carter, the United States formally recognized the People's Republic of China as the sole legal government of China, leading to the severance of official diplomatic ties with Taiwan. To address concerns arising from this shift, Congress enacted the Taiwan Relations Act on April 10, 1979. The act established the American Institute in Taiwan to manage unofficial relations and mandated the provision of defensive arms to Taiwan, thereby ensuring the island's self-defense capabilities. The act also declared that any non-peaceful efforts to determine Taiwan's future would be considered a threat to the peace and security of the Western Pacific and of grave concern to the United States. The Taiwan Relations Act has been instrumental in maintaining a delicate balance in U.S.-China-Taiwan relations. It has facilitated robust unofficial ties between the United States and Taiwan, encompassing economic, cultural, and security dimensions, while upholding the U.S. commitment to the peaceful resolution of cross-strait differences. This framework has contributed to regional stability and has been a cornerstone of U.S. policy in the Western Pacific. Let's take a quick pause. If you've enjoyed the video so far, could we ask a small favor? Hitting the like button helps us reach a broader audience, and sharing your thoughts or feedback in the comments makes an even bigger impact. Thank you for watching. Now, let's dive back in. Economic Engagement from the 1980s to the 2000s Under Deng Xiaoping's leadership, China initiated market-oriented reforms in the late 1970s, transitioning from a centrally planned economy to a more market-driven one. These reforms, known as Reform and Opening Up, aimed to modernize China's economy by encouraging foreign investment and introducing market mechanisms. The establishment of special economic zones in coastal areas like Shenzhen provided favorable conditions for foreign businesses, including American companies, to invest and operate in China. This policy shift attracted significant foreign direct investment, contributing to China's rapid economic growth and integration into the global economy. China's accession to the World Trade Organization on December 11, 2001 marked a significant milestone in its economic development. Joining the WTO required China to implement substantial economic reforms, including reducing tariffs, eliminating trade barriers, and opening various sectors to foreign competition. This integration into the global trading system facilitated a surge in trade activities. Bilateral trade between the United States and China experienced remarkable growth, with total goods trade increasing from less than $100 billion in 1999 to $558 billion by 2019. This period of economic liberalization and global integration led to unprecedented economic growth in China, lifting hundreds of millions out of poverty and transforming the country into a global manufacturing hub. However, it also presented challenges, including increased competition for domestic industries and the need for regulatory reforms to align with international standards. The rapid economic expansion contributed to environmental degradation and income inequality, prompting the Chinese government to implement policies addressing these issues. Strategic Competition 2010-S-2020-S -S. By the 2010-S, U.S.-China relations became increasingly strained over issues such as intellectual property theft, and enforced technology transfers. In 2018, the Trump administration imposed tariffs on $250 billion worth of Chinese goods, prompting retaliatory measures from China and disrupting global supply chains. The Phase 1 trade agreement in 2020 addressed some concerns, but unresolved issues and the COVID-19 pandemic hindered its full implementation. In 2018, 
the United States initiated a series of tariffs targeting Chinese imports, citing concerns over intellectual property theft and enforced technology transfers. The initial tariffs affected $34 billion worth of Chinese goods, with subsequent rounds expanding the total to $250 billion. China responded with retaliatory tariffs on American products, including agricultural goods, which significantly impacted U.S. farmers. The escalating trade tensions led to disruptions in global supply chains, compelling companies to reconsider their sourcing strategies and in some cases relocate production to other countries. This realignment affected various industries, from electronics to agriculture, and introduced uncertainties in global markets. In January 2020, the U.S. and China signed the Phase 1 trade agreement, wherein China committed to increasing its purchases of U.S. goods and services by $200 billion over two years, enhancing intellectual property protections and addressing forced technology transfers. However, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic shortly thereafter disrupted global trade and economic activities, impeding the full implementation of the agreement. China's purchases fell short of the targets, and many structural issues remained unresolved, leaving significant challenges in the bilateral trade relationship. Recent Trends in U.S.-China Trade, 2021-2024 In recent years, U.S.-China trade relations have experienced significant fluctuations, marked by ongoing disputes and shifts in economic policies. In 2023, U.S. exports to China amounted to approximately $147.81 billion, reflecting a complex trade environment influenced by both nations' efforts to diversify import sources and address contentious issues. Preliminary data for 2024 indicates continued declines in key sectors, notably agriculture and technology. The agricultural sector in particular has faced challenges due to China's increased reliance on alternative suppliers, such as Brazil, impacting U.S. exports of soybeans, corn, and meat products. The technology sector has also been affected, with U.S. export controls and China's push for technological self-reliance leading to reduced American technology exports to China. These dynamics have contributed to a decrease in bilateral trade volumes and have raised concerns about the long-term stability of trade relations between the two countries. Additionally, recent policy developments have introduced further uncertainties. In December 2024, President-elect Donald Trump threatened to impose 100% tariffs on China and Russia if the BRICS group of nations proceeded with issuing a new currency, signaling a potential escalation in trade tensions. Key Sectors Affected by Declining Trade Agricultural Products China has significantly reduced its reliance on U.S. agricultural imports, favoring suppliers like Brazil. For example, in early 2024, China's soybean imports from Brazil surged by 211% year-on-year, while U.S. soybean exports to China fell sharply. Technology and Electronics Escalating tensions and export controls have driven China to develop its domestic semiconductor industry. By 2023, China's semiconductor imports dropped 14.6% year-on-year, reflecting efforts toward technological self-reliance. Metals China's decision to halt purchases of U.S. scrap copper amid threats of tariffs has disrupted the U.S. recycling industry. This shift has prompted increased consumption of refined copper within China and heightened market volatility. Energy China continues to diversify its LNG imports, sourcing more from countries like Australia and Qatar. Although U.S. LNG exports to China saw short-term increases, long-term contracts with other suppliers underscore China's strategic diversification. Conclusion The U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods have caused significant disruptions in the American economy, increasing costs for consumers and businesses while failing to revitalize domestic industries. Meanwhile, China's strategic diversification of import sources has insulated its economy from the full impact of these policies, leaving U.S. exporters, especially in agriculture, vulnerable. These developments highlight the unintended consequences of protectionist policies and underscore the need for a balanced, cooperative trade strategy in navigating the complexities of U.S.-China relations. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching this video, we sincerely appreciate you joining us today. 
If our content resonated with you or sparked inspiration, please consider expressing your support by liking it and subscribing to stay connected with our community. Your support holds immense value for us. You can watch another video of our channel, which is now on the screen.